Solving an inequality is similar to solving an equation, with one extra rule which we'll look at later. For example, x plus 4 is greater than 6, and x is an element of n. So we need to solve the inequality first. So we have x plus 4 on the left hand side, and 6 on the right hand side. Let's get the x on its own on the left hand side. x is greater than 6. Now we have plus 4 here, we're bringing it across the inequality symbol, so it becomes minus 4. So that's all quite similar to solving a linear equation. And now x is greater than 6 minus 4 is 2. So what are the possible values of x that make this inequality true? Well, it depends on what set of numbers x belongs to. So we know that x is an element of n, belongs to the set n, which is natural numbers. If you're not sure what n stands for, you can check on page 23 of the Formula and Tables book. So natural numbers are positive whole numbers, like 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. They're the counting numbers. So let's list the elements of the solution set of this inequality. We normally do chain brackets. So x is greater than 2, so 3, 4, 5, and so on. It goes on forever. All of those are natural numbers. We haven't included 2 because x must be greater than 2. Let's plot that solution and see what it looks like. So we draw a number line, and let's mark the elements on the number line. So 3, 4, 5, and so on. We draw an arrow to show that it goes on forever. We don't include 2. Each of these is greater than 2, so x is greater than 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. So we've simplified our original inequality, we've listed the elements of the solution, and we've also plotted them on a number line. Let's try another one. This time we have x plus 3 greater than or equal to 3x plus 1. And x is an element of z. So we solve this as usual. Let's get all the x terms on one side and all the number terms on the other. So x, let's bring across the 3x, it becomes minus 3x, is greater than or equal to 1, and bring across the plus 3, it becomes minus 3. So that becomes x minus 3x is minus 2x, greater than or equal to minus 2. All the time we want to get to x on its own find out what x on its own is greater than or equal to. So let's divide by 2. So we have minus x greater than or equal to minus 1. But we want to know what plus x is. We need to multiply across by minus 1. Minus 1 by minus x becomes x. We must do the same to the other side. Multiply that by minus 1. So minus 1 by minus 1 becomes plus 1. This is the one extra thing we must remember when solving an inequality. When you multiply across by a minus, you must reverse the inequality. So instead of greater than or equal to, it becomes less than or equal to. So x is less than or equal to 1. So what are the actual elements of the solution set? Well, x is an element of z, and z is a set of integers. Integers are positive and negative whole numbers. You can check this on page 23 of the Formula in Tables book. So x is less than or equal to 1. So the first one we can think of is 1. x is less than or equal to 1, so 1 qualifies. Then 0, minus 1, minus 2, and so on. And that goes on forever. So each of these elements satisfies this inequality. 1 is less than or equal to 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2. They're all less than or equal to 1. 
because x is an element of z, the integers, we're able to include 0 and the negative numbers in this case. Let's have a look at that on the number line. So x is less than or equal to 1, and it's an integer, so positive and negative whole numbers. So 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and so on, and all the way to minus infinity. Let's look at another example. This one's a little bit more complicated. It includes brackets. So 4 times 2x minus 1 less than or equal to 3 times x plus 2 and x is an element of r. r is the set of real numbers. This set includes everything on the real number line, not just whole numbers. So let's simplify this. So we multiply out the brackets. 4 times 2x is 8x. 4 by minus 1 is minus 4. Less than or equal to 3x. 3 times plus 2 is plus 6. Now we want to get all the x's on one side and the numbers on the other. So 8x, bring the 3x across, it becomes minus 3x, is less than or equal to 6 plus 4. 8x minus 3x is 5x. 5x is less than or equal to 6 and 4 is 10. Now we need to divide across by 5. So we get x is less than or equal to 2, where x is an element of r. So that's the simplified version of this inequality. Now we can't really list the elements of this because it includes everything, not just the whole numbers. But what we can do is we can plot it on the number line. So x is less than or equal to 2. So 2 is actually included. So we put in a solid circle here. And x is less than or equal to 2. So put a solid line here to show that it includes everything in the number line. All the fractions and decimals and the whole numbers. So that's a graph of the solution set of our inequality. Just for comparison, if our inequality was x is less than 2 and x belongs to the real numbers, it would look slightly different. Let's have a look. So this time x is less than 2. So 2 is not included. So we put an empty circle around 2 and then we do our solid line all the way back and that goes on forever. So this shows that the solution set includes everything up to 2 but not including 2. So 1.99999 would be included but not 2 itself. So that's how we represent this. So it's slightly different than this one. This one has a solid circle here to show that x is less than or equal to 2. So 2 is included. In the next example, we're going to look at two inequalities. So we have 2x plus 3 is greater than 7, intersecting with 5x minus 4 is less than 21, and x is an element of the natural numbers. So what we do is we solve each inequality separately first. So 2x plus 3 is greater than 7, that becomes 2x is greater than 7 minus 3. So 2x is greater than 4. So x is greater than 2. So that simplifies that one. And we're going to simplify this one as well. 5x minus 4 is less than 21. So 5x is less than 21 plus 4. 5x is less than 25, so x is less than 5. So we've simplified both of them. So remember that x is an element of n. We can list the solution set of each inequality separately. So x is greater than 2, so 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. And for this one, x is less than 5, so 4, 3, 
two, one. And remember, we want the intersection of them. So, what is the intersection of these sets? What elements are common to both sets? Three is common to both. Four is common to both. Five, no, six, no, and so on. Four is common to both. Three is common to both. We've already captured those. Two and one, they're not common to both. So this is actually our solution set here. We could also plot the solution sets for each and find the intersection of them. Let's have a look at that. So let's plot our first set in red. X is greater than 2 and it's a natural number. So 3, 4, 5 and so on. Let's plot our second set in blue. So X is less than 5, so 4, 3, 2, and 1. 0 and minus 1 and so on don't count because X is an element of natural numbers. So that's our second set. Now let's highlight where they intersect with each other. So they intersect at this point and at this point. So they intersect at 3 and 4. So that's the same as what we figured out earlier. So that's solving inequalities. Thanks for watching. Talk to you in the next lesson.